Welcome to The Common Patriot. I'm glad you're here. I'm pretty excited about this video because I'm gonna share with you a few things that I've learned about maintaining a firearm that can help it to keep running the way it's supposed to. Now this gun right here is a Marlin Model 60. I bought this gun from a friend that I was working with at the time when I was working construction. And he had upgraded to a different 22. And he said, well, I'll sell you this one. But I do want to warn you that, uh, you know, you really got to keep it clean or it doesn't operate very well. And I did have a number of issues. And I'd tear it apart and I'd clean it and I'd put it back together and it would run for a little bit. And then it just had the same issues over and over again. To the point that I was so frustrated that I was like, this gun's either going in the trash or I'm going to sell it for, to somebody for like 25 bucks. However, I never could figure out why. Before I went to sell it, I thought, I'm gonna tear it apart one last time and go through it. I'm gonna show you how I clean this gun as well as what I found that was causing all the problems because now this gun, 22 years later, runs fantastic. I think that one question that comes up when it comes to cleaning a firearm is how far do you take it apart? And the simple but maybe complex answer is, far enough to get the job done and nothing further. So let's tear this gun apart and take a look inside. First thing we always do when picking up a gun or handling a gun is to check to see that it's unloaded. I can visually see that this one is unloaded and the bolt is locked back. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the magazine tube spring. And then to get this gun apart, I'm going to have to start taking a couple of these screws out to pull the trigger assembly out and ultimately separate the stock from the barrel and receiver. It may seem obvious, but one of the places that is a very good place to start if you don't know how far you should tear your gun apart is check the owner's manual. And that will usually tell you how far you need to tear a gun apart in order to clean it or to field strip the gun. You need a little bit smaller head here. That's why I like these little wheeler sets. It has a bunch of different bits in them. They're specifically meant for firearms. They're just a very handy little set to have around. There's the trigger group, but I took the screw that holds the barrel down to the stock. So now that's gonna allow this to separate from the stock. Before I go any further, what I'm gonna do to keep my hands clean is I always like to use a pair of latex gloves or something like that. Now, as I continue to pull this Marlin Model 60 apart, there's a little pin here in the back and that's gonna allow this part of the receiver and a lot of the inner workings of the firearm to come out pulls out there is the bolt handle and now this gun is completely field stripped now i'm ready to show you my cleaning process the first process that i'm going to do is i'm actually going to use this otis bore foam cleaner because it's going to take a little time for that to work in the bore i'm going to put it up here push it down here so i can spray it right into the receiver end of the barrel and i'm going to let that foam sit there and work its way down the barrel. That foam will get in the barrel and uh, break everything up. I'll run a patch through it at the end to clean it all up. So I'm gonna grab the Shooter's Choice Quick Scrub. Let's get some safety glasses on because I'm going to be spraying chemicals and I wanna protect my eyes. Using these tubes sometimes is a hassle, but you'll realize if you do a lot of gun cleaning that you will definitely save on the amount of solvent that you use when you're doing things. I'm just gonna take each individual part and spray it down quickly. I'm gonna set it aside. I'm gonna spray down the bolt. Now, if you're wondering, I do have a garbage can set here on a chair that you really can't see on the screen that I'm spraying this chemical into. As I do this, just gonna spray down all these parts. After I've sprayed everything down is I'm going to use a brush. This one happens to be a blue Otis nylon brush. And I'm going to scrub all the pieces down. Be careful if you're scrubbing a spring because you can unhinge it from whatever it's attached to and it goes bing across the room. And then you're like, where did that come from? Or more importantly, where to go? So I'm going to work in all the little nooks and crannies with the brush. I've got two different sizes on the brush here that I can use. Now, sometimes there's some areas that you just can't get into very well with your brush. So I like to use a Q-tip that I can get in here and swab out some of these areas, especially around springs, different things like that where I can easily feel and I can get into an area that a brush can't. So I've cleaned all my pieces up. What I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna spray them off again with the Shooter's Choice Quick Scrub 
just to kind of blow off any of the debris that I already shook loose by using the brush. But then I just take and I'm going to take and wipe that off with the patch or piece of cloth that I have. One part we haven't looked at yet is the receiver part to this gun. And inside here is where my problem lied. If you look at the bolt right here, you will see that this has these little fingers for extracting the cartridge out of the chamber. My problem that caused so many malfunctions in this gun was inside the receiver here, you can see that there's two cutouts on either side for those two little pieces to slide into. What had happened is that these two spots had totally clogged up with carbon buildup. In fact, I had done cleaning similar to what I just showed you on all these parts. I had scrubbed every little piece and it still didn't work. Now, it was actually by accident. As I looked, I was like, what could be causing this problem? That the bolt won't close right, you know, having misfeeds, all kinds of issues. Then it was that when I was using a little tool like this to dig around here, that I actually found that those two spots right there existed. There was so much buildup that you hardly could even see them. These holes are not very big. I dug and dug and scraped stuff out of there for like 25 minutes. I don't know how there could be that much stuff in there. But since I learned that little trick on this Marlin Model 60, this gun runs like a top. But that's just an example of doing a good clean, knowing how your firearm operates, is gonna keep you running your firearm in tip-top shape. There's three main problems with the firearm. Number one, you're using poor ammunition, ammunition that's been stored improperly and is not producing the right pressures to operate your semi-automatic. Number two is improper cleaning of your firearm. You haven't maintained it properly to make it function. And number three, which is almost never the case, but once in a while it is, is that there's actually a problem with a part or piece or something is broken. I would say that a probably 90 plus percent of the problems that I see with firearms are the first two that I mentioned. But the last thing that I need to do to clean this gun up is to run a patch down the barrel. I'm just gonna insert that into the throat of the barrel and then I'm just going to pull that out. Not too bad. Now we're ready to lubricate the firearm. I've used a lot of different lubricants over the years trying to keep my show guns operating successfully without flaw in front of a live audience. And the best thing that I have came up with so far is the Otis Dry Lube. I've been using Otis Dry Lube for years now and it is a fantastic product. I'm gonna take each individual piece, I'm gonna spray it down and set it aside. The nice part about the Dry Lube is that it sprays on wet but then it dries and it leaves a film on this. So I'm not gonna wipe that down. I'm just gonna set it aside, spray down all my parts. Now we've got our pieces lubricated. It's time to put the gun back together. The last thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a rust protective oil on the outside before I put it back away in the safe to uh, take this gun out again another day. We talked about how far do you have to tear your firearm down in order to clean it properly. The other thing is how simple and easy it is with just a few quick tools. A brush, um, you're gonna need some sort of screwdriver or whatever. You can use the tools around your home, but if you're working on firearms, especially if you have small screws or hex heads, I would recommend that you get tools that are meant for firearms because I've learned from experience that using the Allen wrench set from the garage that I use for a lot of other things strips heads out on firearms. You need a precision set when you're working with firearms. Very important. As well as some good cleaning supplies. And um, these ones from Otis and Shooter's Choice are stuff that I've used for years. Gun cleaning and maintenance really isn't that difficult, but it is something that's necessary in order to keep our firearms working in their top condition. Appreciate you all watching the channel. If you're not already a common Patriot subscriber, please subscribe to the channel and bring some friends on over that are gonna enjoy some of this content. Also, if you ever have a question or something related to cleaning or firearm maintenance or any of my videos, please put a question down in the comments. I'm happy to help you out the best that I can. Remember, you're a common patriot, so be bold, be strong, don't ever give up. God bless, we'll see you next time.